Welcome back to the Melbourne Grand Prix paddock. It's been a long two years, but we're finally back in Australia, and I think we're really excited to get back into action this weekend at Albert Park. I'm joined by, rather fittingly, our Australian colleague, Andrew Van Leeuwen. Yeah, quite a quiet Thursday, I think. We've seen the Super Bowl Cars boys, they've been out there. But one of the big talking points this weekend has been the fact we've got four DRS zones, and that's a first for Formula One. Now, four seems a bit excessive. I think we've seen three in the past, but it's part of these sort of wider changes for Albert Park. What are your, what are your sort of thoughts on that? Like, the decision to go with four, I mean, is that too many or do you think it's what they need to give some good overtaking around this circuit? Luke, I am slightly concerned that it might be one too many. I think what we've seen today, as you mentioned, we've had supercars on track. We've, so we've actually seen the track being used by racing cars, very different racing cars to Formula One cars. But the one thing that is abundantly clear is that that is so fast over the back of the circuit now. So the supercars are getting up to about 275 kilometers an hour. Wow. It is a long straight. Now, they're going to be easy flat corners in a Formula One car. So I think that there's a chance that there's going to be a huge slipstream effect anyway. And even the supercars guys were talking about feeling they were getting a tow. Whether it's maybe just going to make it a bit too easy to pass, you yeah. know, if you get a run on someone, if you can hit the DRS button, are we going to see those moves completed well beyond we're getting anywhere near a braking area? My gut feeling is that that, that could be a concern. Cool. So to go over where those DRS zones are, we've got the main straight as in previous years, the run from turn two to turn three, again, as in previous years. The, the new one is now what was turn nine and 10, that's mm -hmm. that chicane. That's now been replaced by a long sweeping left-hand kink that's not even actually labeled as a corner. Kevin Magnuson, he said today, he thinks you're going to get pretty loose going through there if you've got DRS open. Are you surprised that sort of like that they put DRS on what is basically a long sweeping left-hander? Do you think that could be a bit tricky for the drivers? Well, again, I think that is probably a part of the track. Like that, that whole part of the circuit has been designed to improve overtaking okay so that you can get behind someone you can follow them through that tricky corner you know that what used to be 9 and 10 then you go into what used to be 11 and 12 and is now 9 and 10 which is you know the car's quite unsettled through there it's a seventh gear corner or whatever it is and then you have a hard stop into uh, the new turn 11 yeah. and that's where you can execute your pass because you've had a chance to follow someone and maybe they're struggling with balance a bit or whatever the opportunity is there for the car to not necessarily be planted to the ground for you to get a run on someone and get past them and we've seen with these new cars that that is possible mm. so that's where I come back to the point of do we really need DRS or could we have just let nature yeah. take its course and perhaps if, if it's hard to use the DRS then it becomes not an issue yeah, anyway course, yeah. you know what I mean so yeah, it, from that level, it's going to create some intrigue, if nothing else. Mm, definitely. I asked Valtteri Bottas about this earlier, and he said he thinks it will lead to some quite tactically interesting battles. And I think we saw that between Charles Leclerc and uh, Max Verstappen right the way through the opening two races. Do you think, I mean, is DRS is kind of a necessary evil in Formula 1 right now, but I thought in those first two races, it actually added a lot to the race. Like, it made it really interesting, sort of the cat and mouse battles they had. Are we sort of looking at DRS in quite a positive light, actually, in a, in a weird kind of way right now? Or do we ideally need to get to a point where we don't have it in Formula 1? Oh, I think we need it right now. I think we're a long way off not yeah. needing it in general. Whether we need four zones of it is one question, but yeah. we certainly need uh, something. It's definitely changed. The, these new regulations have changed the way that it is used. It has become a tactical thing where it wasn't necessarily so much in the past. So, you know, we when we get to the point where you don't want to be leading, you know, that's like old yeah. yeah, board exactly. racing, yeah. you know, like that's, that's cool motor racing. Yeah. So I think that's where we probably feel like there's a positive spin on it at the moment because it is helping create yeah. this kind of really interesting reversal of where track position was king and where all you wanted to be was in front because you could be two and a half seconds slower than the guy behind you and even with DRS he was going to yeah. struggle to pass you. You don't have that, uh, that luxury anymore and drivers are having to think about mm. where they're positioning the car in terms of the other car in the heat of battle, which is obviously fascinating. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned the track changes. Obviously, that's a, a major story for this year, everything that has uh, been altered around the circuit. The Supercars boys, they've been out there today. I think yeah. there was a, quite a big crash in qualifying as well. And how, how have they sort of found the new circuit? And how much faster is it? It's about 10 seconds, I believe, yeah. compared to the last pole time? About seven or eight seconds, yeah. So it's significantly quicker. They're all loving it. Everyone's saying nice. it is just so much fun. I think it's it was been an interesting one with Supercars about whether it was actually going to help overtaking or not because Turn 9, the old Turn 9, used to be quite a good overtaking mm -hmm. spot. But I think everyone's saying now it's going to be a lot of fun. So it, they, were, they were qualifying on soft compound tyres today it, with quality fuel loads. It was flat all the way around the back. What will be really interesting is when we stick the hard compound tyre on to go qualifying tomorrow morning and then when we stick some fuel in them and try and race. And the guys, there's already a big split on opinion of 
what it's going to be like trying to follow a car through mm. there because these might be touring cars but they get aero wash as well yeah. so um, they're saying it could be pretty sketchy if you're on the hard compound tires with a bit of fuel and you're trying to race guys it could get pretty wild but yeah hitting big speed that's probably the fastest those cars go apart from bathurst okay, wow. where they're just going down yeah the hill. of course so the guys will say it's pretty interesting because we're actually having to drive the cars yeah. at like conrod straight style speeds that 275 280 um, but they all love it. And Sergio Perez just did some laps of the new track mm. in a supercar. And that was one of the questions he was asked when he got out of the car. What do you think? And he said, it's going to be great. Nice. <laughs> it's going to be good. He looked pretty happy when he nice. got out of the car. And uh, Fernando Alonso was out there as well. He was. With him as well. That's yeah. right. So Fernando Alonso has obviously seen it as well. So nice. um, he cut some laps in, in Thomas Randall's supercar with Thomas next to him. Uh, Triple Eight were a bit braver with Sergio. They let him just go out on his <laughs> right, own. Okay. But they also have a spare car here this <laughs> right. weekend for the speed comparison. <laughs> okay. So it's really good to see again this sort of crossover that we see from drivers. It's uh, yeah, a really good story. And I think probably the the overriding story so far this weekend, as I said at the sort of the start of the video, is just how good it is to be back in Melbourne. I mean, we were here in 2020 when everything shut down, and they were explaining that the race is cancelled, and we thought, when are we going to get racing again? Now, you used to live in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. You know how it thrives off a of Grand Prix weekend. Does it feel stronger than ever? Has yeah. the absence made the heart I, grow fonder I, for F1 in Melbourne? I think so. I mean, I wasn't at any of the very early races in the mid-1990s. 1996 was the first Melbourne race. Um, that was a record race day crowd that day. This feels like something approaching that in terms of the vibe. The crowd, Saturday and Sunday sold out. It's probably going to be the biggest crowd we've had in, I don't know, 10 years or so. Wow. There's just a real sense of excitement that mm -hmm. this event's happening. And it's so full circle because remember the Grand Prix was kind of the breaking point for COVID-19 in Australia. Mm -hmm. You know, we were still kind of just carrying on. There yeah. wasn't a factor in our lives. And on that day when the Grand Prix was cancelled, it became a factor and within weeks we were in lockdowns and had all the things that the rest of the world was sort of dealing with so there's something very full circle i think even for melbournians and for australians to see the grand prix back and to have it back and to be, be at albert park and for things to feel normal probably for the first time yeah. since that really weird friday the 13th yeah. in 2020 i think it's going to be a great weekend i think it today thursday crowd was something like 55,000 or something wow which you'd never go close to normally so there's real excitement for this event. Yeah, it's amazing, I must say. And yeah, even just walking around the fan zones and stuff, yeah, you just see how much busier it is compared to uh, previous yeah. years, which is great. So yeah, no, thank you, ABL, for joining me. And, no uh, problem. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great weekend. I think we're just so excited to be back. Uh, we're going to be really interested to see how those four DRS zones do play out and what kind of race the track changes do give us. Be sure to stay tuned, obviously, to Autosport right the way through the race weekend. We'll have all of the, the coverage throughout. I think we're just really excited to see the drivers get on track and finally show what this new Albert Park track is like.